When American diplomats visit the country of Pakistan, they make their official toasts not with champagne but with fruit juice. That's because Pakistan is a Muslim country and Islam forbids the drinking of alcohol. So how is it then that a brewery in the city of Rawalpindi is doing such a thriving business? ABC's Nick Watts stopped in for a pint. In a land of mosques, mullahs and madrasas, a strange brew. Murray beer. It was first fermented in 1860 to quench the thirst of occupying British troops. They, they wanted the fresh beer. Spoiled people, you know. <laughs> These soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> These days, Murray is allowed to sell its beer, whiskey, vodka, gin and rum to just 3% of Pakistan's population, the non-Muslims. Hang on, they make 10 million pints of brewski every year. No one believes it's all being drunk by Christians and Zoroastrians. You're selling quite a lot of booze. Well, yes, but it does get pilfered and that uh, find its way to wherever uh, it is required. By law, Muslims can't drink. That doesn't mean that Muslims don't partake of the stuff also. But just not officially. Well, yes, that's right. And officially, Murray can't advertise. These beer mats are contraband. No biggie. Murray's only competition is low-grade smuggled stuff like Glenn's vodka. I mean, who's Glenn? Certainly no match for Murray. But they can't export a drop because the Islamic Ideology Council has forbidden exports. They don't want the good name of Pakistan associated too closely with alcohol. I mean, a Muslim country can't be famous for booze. After all, the Quran states alcohol is a tool of Satan. Pakistan, however, takes a pragmatic approach. The government does realize that, that uh, a total prohibition is counterproductive and it's not succeeded anywhere in the world. So prohibition is the official policy to keep the mullahs mellow while the blind eye is turned to the popularity of Murray. Nick Watt, ABC News, Ralph Pindi, Pakistan. Cheers.